Both of you grew up in Tulsa, Tennessee, population 17,000. I did look that up. Uh, what is your favorite childhood memory together? There's so many. Uh, honestly, just playing sports. Uh, if I had to put it in, in perspective and, and without, you know, singling out one memory, uh, just growing up playing sports together, you know, we, we played football together, baseball together, basketball together, soccer together. Um, you know, we're only 11 months apart. So uh, just being able to do that with my brother, um, you know, and get out there and, and have fun um, out on the field. You know, that was probably the best best memories growing up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's we're a baseball family or a sports family. I could say, uh, you know, it's that's what our we we've revolved around um, going to the ballpark or ball field. Um, so that's like some of the greatest memories we have uh, growing up to Oklahoma for sure. Is there a uh, brother story that you would like to come clean about now that maybe the parents don't know about? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, that's a tough one. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> we used to sneak around a little bit, but uh, for the most part, we was always uh, – our parents were on top of us. So it was kind of tough to, to move around, you know, without them knowing. So they pretty much know all the tricks we got up our sleeves. Oh, that's, that's yes. tough. Yeah. I've done things with like that with my brother. We'll start talking about something my mom didn't have a clue about. And she'll finally just say, I don't even want to know. Just don't <laughs> even tell me. Yeah. Yeah. What is your earliest baseball memory that you have? For me, it goes back to like T-ball. Um, I remember my dad just being out there. Even like like I said, even with Justice, uh, we was out there in the front yard playing catch, um, running around, playing wiffle ball, um, throwing the football around, playing tackle football on the trampoline, shooting basketball in the yard, um, skateboarding, you know, anything. I remember just being out in the front yard because that's kind of where it all started. Um, you know, we was little, just out in the front yard. Our, both our parents would hit us, you know, fly balls or throw the ball to us. Or, you know, we'd hit rocks across the street, which we'd get in trouble for doing, things like that. I mean, those are those are good times, but the first memory definitely those out in the out in the backyard, just you know the home 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 made videos and stuff of us out in the yard throwing. <laughs> can't can't hardly hit the ball yet, but um, you know those are good times for sure. Do you remember your first glove? Oh yeah, it was a it was a Rollins. I can't remember what kind of Rollins it was. It was a, it was a the old plastic Rollins glove. It's still, <laughs> still at the house somewhere, I'm sure, probably. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think in Jordan had a soccer game one time when we were younger. And, um, you know, I'm left-handed, Jordan's right-handed. So they make – the right-handed gloves are more common. Um, so coming up, you know, the left-handed gloves, they were just kind of unheard of type thing unless you had the money to, you know, get you a nice one. But uh, I was at my brother's soccer game, and um, this guy actually found a brand-new uh, Worth, um, which was in Tullahoma, the, the baseball company. Uh, it was a brand new Worth left-handed glove that he found out of a dumpster, actually. And we cleaned it off a little bit, and, you know, it was pretty much good as new. And I used that as my first glove for the first couple of years. So That's awesome. Yeah, I remember mine was a Barry Larkin signed black Rawlings. That's one I remember. Absolutely. <laughs> Who was your favorite baseball player or athlete growing up? Uh, for me, probably have to be David Price. You know, he got a you know he's he's uh, well known around uh, y'all's part up there. But uh, David Price, he was the guy that I've started watching um, when he went to Vanderbilt. Um, that was when my when I started paying attention a little bit more to the game of baseball and learning the game of pitching and things like that. And I started watching him when he was at Vandy and uh, kind of trying to imitate my game after him, model my game after him. And you know, I just love the way he attacked guys and and play the game. And uh, you know, he's an incredible role model and incredible person. So. Yeah, my, my favorite athlete growing up was uh, Vladimir Guerrero. He was an outfielder, yeah. Um, the reason I loved him, he just – he always got the job done. You know, he he, not, he might not, uh, you know, look the coolest or 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 did it, but he when, he when he came up to bat, he got his job done. He did his job. Um, and, you know, I loved him for that. And that was my favorite from growing up. And never used batting gloves, I remember. Never used batting gloves. Never did. Oh, it's raw. <laughs> That's it. And he had an absolute cannon, I remember. He was yeah, he, he was something to watch, absolutely. Both of those guys were. So you both attended Tullahoma High School, home of the Wildcats. Um, to the baseball part, who is a teacher that made the 
big impact on you? Uh, I probably have to say uh, Brad White. Um, he was a U.S. history teacher, but he was also uh, the baseball coach. Um, you know, spending a lot of time with him in the classroom and, you know, definitely out on the field. You know, he taught me how to how to play the game, approach the game in the right way and uh, play, play hard. Um, you know, our practices were tough and he was always, you know, honest. And at the time, you know, we was wondering, you know, why is he, you know, why is he honest all the time? Like, come on, he could chill out a little bit. But, uh, you know, now that I get older, looking back, it was, you know, for a good cause and it was for a reason to, you know, keep us pushing and keep us working hard, get that good work ethic. Yeah, I'd say Brad White as well. Outside of baseball, uh, I'd say our librarian, she was always there, Miss Holiday. She was kind of just kind of making sure that we were, we had everything, you know, there for the day if we needed anything she was there for us or whatnot um as, as well as our aunt she was a teacher my mom's sister uh miss mm -hmm. pendergraf she was uh she taught at the high school so she actually helped us a lot to uh, those four years as well too could you go by and get a dollar for a coke uh she oh, might have free. it in the back honestly yeah <laughs> <laughs> she snuck yes. in the back room she had she had a stock Stop full of the fridge. <laughs> you just go in there. I and mean, it does out. help if you got family there, so you better take advantage of it. Absolutely, oh, yeah. Jordan. I know you're 25. Justice, you're 24. If you could give your 15 year old high school self advice for those next four years of high school, what would you tell yourself? I tell myself that don't listen to to people trying to pull you down because there's a lot of people out there that is going to wish for you to fail. You know, I just tell myself, don't listen to those, those negative people and, you know, find a goal and uh, set goals um, with whatever you're doing as far as it can be in the classroom, on the field, or I feel like just set those goals and, and try and attain those goals and, um, you know, keep your head down and stay humble. Schoolwork. Schoolwork is big. With me going to Vanderbilt, it was very important to – just kind of get schoolwork done first before of everything else. I know it seems like that's preached a lot and stuff, but it really did bring me to the next level, um, being able to have conversations and stuff and learn and use that into the society than just, um, you know, kind of going through high school because it does go by fast. Um, and if you set goals and meet those goals along the way, then you'll start to see you achieve more in life and you go places. With those goals for both of you, I've heard some people, they really need to write them down to make them concrete. Did you both do that or are they, are they just always in your head? Absolutely. Wrote them down. I think, I think if you, if you don't write anything down, you're not ever going to remember it. Um, I think write, writing down, having a journal, jotting down things throughout the day is huge. Um, you know, you can reflect on good days and bad days and also your feelings as well. And those, it's going to help you propel, hmm. propel you forward for what's to come. Um, when you can look back and have a, like, say, hey, I set this goal here. And once you achieved it, you know, did you mark that off and work towards the next one? You can kind of see see the progress instead of just kind of looking back, you know, a couple years from now. Um, and it keeps you going. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I mean, same it, thing. Just, yeah, same thing. Jot, jotting those goals down, you know, having something to, to strive for. Um, and like you said, if you kind of just try and think of a goal, you know, you can get to living day by day and then, you know, slowly it'll just gradually kind of drift away of, you know, what kind of goal you're kind of achieving or you'll start to maybe change the goal if you're not starting to see, uh, you know, improvements or, or what you want to see early on. Um, you know, you can kind of change the direction of it. But, you know, if you jot it down, it's, it's legit, it's there. And, you know, that, that can be the main focus that you're striving for. Now, at this moment, for a lot of people in you know the country, everyone's trying to figure out paths, different paths to take. All the seniors this year are trying to figure out, really, what in the world am I about to do? So um, I know, Jordan, you were drafted in 2013 by the Red Sox, chose to go to the Vanderbilt, then you were drafted by the Dodgers. Justice, you committed to Vanderbilt, but then you were drafted by Cleveland and signed to play professional ball, which is, I think it's important for students to know those are two different paths and they're both fine and they're both good. Um, how did those paths and those decisions you make shape you the way you are now? Um, yeah, I think um, first and foremost, you got to look at the two paths that, uh, you know, could have been taken. 
uh, which were both positive paths. You know, they're win-win situations either way. So that's the way I looked at it. And, you know, coming out of high school, going straight into pro ball, it, it happens. You have to grow up quick. Um, that's <laughs> one of the main things. And, you know, it goes from, you know, doing schoolwork to, oh, now all of a sudden I'm paying, you know, the bills to, to this apartment. I'm having to, you know, do my laundry. I'm having to do all this make sure I'm, um, you know, have money to eat and things like that. But it's just, it's uh, one of those things where you just gotta, gotta grow up quick. And, um, you know, the path I chose, I wouldn't have been able to do it without the people around me. First and foremost, my parents, uh, you know, I definitely would have struggled if it wasn't for them, you know, going off to Arizona, you know, from Tennessee straight to Arizona um, in a matter of a couple of days after signing that contract. And, you know, not knowing anybody or, or what you're getting yourself into, uh, you know, having those people to fall back on, have your back um, for back home, have that comfort zone. Um, that's one of the main things. And then my teammates having those close friends, um, close knitted friends that supported me and, and helped me get through. And a lot of them were older. So uh, they were kind of like a big brother figure to me. So it was, it was more so of them filling the shoes of um, helping me out down the road of, um, whenever I have questions or things like that or in a bind. Um, so just having those close friends, picking your friends, uh, picking picking the right friend group, um, I think it's huge. Mostly just all the support from back home, from the parents and, and having those friends to go along with it. It is two, two completely different paths. Um, and the, the path I chose is the more traditional, I guess, like for a, for a student, um, you know, come out of high school to go into college, um, just that kind of environment. Uh, that was that was huge for me. College was a big was a big part of my development and growth um, off the field and on the field. It helped me grow up off the field a lot, to be honest. Um, you know, you're, it's the first time in your life your parents aren't going to be there. You're living by yourself. Um, you know, you got you got new friends and stuff like that. So there's going to be a lot of pressure and a lot of things to do. You know, kind of kind of hinder you from your goals that you're setting daily or jotting down. That's where you got to learn to separate yourself, as what Justin was saying. And, kind of pick those friend groups and, and kind of stick to similar groups who who do things like you or, or who like the same things as you and kind of stick to those guys and those groups and girls. And that's that's what helped me. That was one of the biggest things that helped me is um, just sticking with my teammates and the ones that I can trust um, away from my family back home. Um, still have family and friends away from home and college that would be around that helped me as well. Yeah. Uh, in both ways, um, life comes at you pretty fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. it does. So even thinking of that, I want you to imagine back to the day when you signed your name on that paper to play professional baseball. At that moment, you're sitting there and you sign your name. What is going through your mind? I know in my situation, it was different because I had justice. He was the first one to do it. Um, so honestly, his, his answer would probably be, you know, a lot more intense. But uh, so, yeah, I had Justice go through it first, and I kind of already knew a little bit of the ropes, you know, kind of what he's been through. Um, but it was definitely the most exciting, most unbelievable feeling ever, you know, because, like, it's just step it's step one of a goal. Um, you, like I said, you know, once you hit those goals, it is it's definitely is exciting, but that's just part – that's step one of the plan, you know. Um, so we're going to keep going. But it was definitely one of the best feelings ever. Yeah, it was incredible feeling, that's for sure. Uh, it's just everything you worked for. Um, you know, you put all the all the sweat, tears, all the time and hours and to being out on the field, um, you know, missing out on parties, sacrificing, hanging out with your buddies or doing doing whatever to, you know, put in work for, for your craft and um, you know, to see it finally pay off. Um and which Jordan said that was that was the first step, which is it's crazy that that's, that's not the finishing, um, you know, that's just the beginning. But uh, you know, to reach that point, to be able to accomplish that that goal, uh, you know, it was incredible. I was wondering, uh, yeah, Jordan, when you saw Justice sign that, did you think I want to do that? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was my I was my freshman. I was a freshman in college, and I seen him do that, and I seen the smile on his face, and I knew right then and there that that's that that's it. That's what I want to do, too. That's what you want to do. Yeah. You know, I really thought about you, too. There is, well, for every little kid that goes out and plays baseball and they're little, there's a small percent that plays middle school ball, and there's a small percent that plays high school ball. 
And then there's a really tiny percent that plays professional ball and that's you two. To me, work ethic plays into that so much. How does work ethic affect you? One of my main things that I pride myself on is, is I want to be known for being a strong worker, a hard worker, um, having a strong work ethic. And I think that's just been, you know, just been um, molded into me throughout the years, just growing up as a kid. Um, you know, you find something you love and then, you know, you put all your hard work and passion into it. Um, you know, it's going to it's going to take you somewhere. Uh, especially if you keep working on it and, and, and uh, striving forward with it. But, um, you know, obviously it comes with the athletic ability, you know, God-given talent. That's, that's, that's the main thing, but that can only take you so far. Then you got to put in the work to kind of be better than those other guys that are out there just as good as you, you know, that live out in California or wherever and, um, you know, out there putting the work in. So, comes down to who's going to work harder. Um, you know, there's a lot of talented people out there, a lot of people that can play the game of baseball. But, um, you know, at, at, at the end of the day, the guy that works the hardest is going to be the, the happiest when he goes home. So. Yeah, work ethic. Work ethic. Um, I think that goes along with just it's, – it's, it's one of the most important things that's instilled in the most successful people. You, you're not, you're not going to get anywhere in this life like if you don't work. Like Justin said uh, – you know, it's it's something that we were taught and, and we're, that was kind of molded into us at a young age. If you once you learn to or you kind of find out what you want to do in life and you and you develop a work ethic or a, then, you, then you're going to you're going to go further in life. You're going to get more things out of it. Yeah, I've always kind of thought with whatever job, there's always someone who can take my place. That first time when you stepped on the mound in professional ball, were you thinking or not thinking and were your legs just complete jelly up there yeah I would think I was actually thinking a little bit too much <laughs> I, my first game in pro ball was horrible uh you know I was just so amped up so ready to get out there just didn't really know what to expect if these guys were as good as what you know everybody said or if, you know I was as good if I was able to pitch there but you know just overthinking and that's just one of those things where it's just you gotta just let your body just just go out there and play um, you know, and that's with anything. When you overthink and, and second guess yourself, you're not going to get anywhere. Um, but if, you, if you've been putting the work in and been doing it your whole life, you know, uh, your body's just going to take over um, and your athletic ability is going to take over or whatever ability that is um, that you're putting towards your goal. So, but yeah, it was uh, not, not, not too good of a first pro debut. But Yeah, my first one uh, was in Arizona. I went through one inning. It wasn't bad. It went by quick, uh, got in and out of there quick. And then I was gone to uh, Great Lakes, Michigan after that. So it wasn't too bad. Got in got in, and got quick, out quick. So it was a good one. My first year of teaching was pretty bad too. So, you know, same. When you think of leaders who you have played with, even going back high school and even up through college and the pros, when you think of those leaders, who is one that automatically comes to mind? Tim Corbin for me. Number one, he's helped me. He's Vanderbilt head coach. Um, he's like a father figure for me and the most important, probably some of the most important years of my development in life, just in general right there. Um, he, he helped me so much on the field and off the field. Um, it's it's unparamount, like how much he did for me. Um, he's he's obviously a national legend, but he's, he's everything in – and more that than what people uh, speak of him. Um, he really is. He truly is a great coach. One of the greatest coach is the greatest coach. Um, I love him. Love Coach Corbin. Yeah. He's he's one. He's the one that's helped me get here. Yeah, I'd uh, I probably have to say uh, Aaron Judge. Uh, you know, I got to see Aaron Judge in action um, in 2018 when I got called up, and also in spring training before that and stuff. But uh, really got to see him in action in the clubhouse. Um, you know, he's 20. 26 years old and he's just now his second year in the big leagues and he's telling guys like CC Sabathia, uh, Brett Gardner, um, you know, Matt Holiday, guys like that, um, Andrew McCutcheon, and he's actually leading these guys uh, in the locker room. He's, he's the one holding the meetings. He's gathering them up before the game, after the game. Um, and you could tell that he just, guys just gravitated to him. 
you know, he wasn't going to – just because he was Aaron Judge, he wasn't going to, you know, shoo you off or anything like that. He actually would sit down, you know, ask how you're doing, what you got, if you had any questions or anything like that. And he was going to make sure that you, he got the answer for you. Man, he was he was the real deal. Um, and that was my first taste in the big leagues. And, and after witnessing that, it was, it was uh, no surprise that, you know, he's one of the best players in the game today just by the way he carried himself. So. Well, I know in both of your careers – you had to take risks and you had to take chances. I mean, to even get into your, your, your profession. And I think it's hard for students to do that. I think it's hard. They have that fear of taking a chance, taking a risk because it may go wrong. Describe a time when you had to take a risk and it paid off. That's a hard question. That's a good one. <laughs> uh, let's see. Last year, I, I've always, well, my whole life, I've always thrown a four-seam fastball. And I've always, um, that's just what I was taught. And, you know, a few years in the big leagues, it's, it wasn't really getting the job done. It was getting hit a lot. I couldn't control it that good. And just, we had to, I had to figure something out. And, uh, you know, last year in spring training, talking to the coaches, they brought me a, uh, they came up to me about, throwing a different pitch, throwing a two-seamer, which I've never thrown before, didn't even know how to throw it, anything like that. Just went with it, you know, took the risk of, of throwing the pitch because, you know, if you – sometimes if you throw a new pitch, you might lose the other pitch that you had before. You know, I took the risk in throwing it, and it pretty much changed my whole demeanor on the mound, whole, my, whole way I pitch, um, you know, pretty much my whole career. Uh, you know, just picking up that one pitch and, and you know, when somebody yeah. comes that comes to you with, with some change to, to help you, but at the time you don't really see it as help, you more so see it as a, um, well, at least for me, I, I didn't really like the, I didn't really like the, what they were bringing to me, but, um, you know, I tried it and I took the risk and, you know, uh, it paid off in the end. So, um, you know, just being able to take that, that little, little, information or help and uh you know get out of your stubborn way sometimes and and trying new things out i think is uh is huge so yeah i think kind of like um mariano rivera's book he talked about when he first started to throw that cutter and yep. it was before a game i believe and it just dove like it never seen before and i can't imagine just the am i going to try this in a game and luck for him and work for him that it certainly paid off. <laughs> right, right, right. Baseball is a, well, it's, it's called, you know, a game of failure. Batters and pitchers, but, um, but I think students struggle with failure as well. Um, as pitchers, Mariano Rivera had said, he never thought, looked at it as failure. He looked at it as a learning process. How do you deal when you had a rough outing in just your mental strength? I, I think that's the hardest thing is uh, dealing with a rough outing. Um, you know, because you're so mad. You just put in four days of hard work for that fifth day. Um, and then you go out there and you don't do your job. And it's like you let down the team, you let down yourself. You know, you just feel all this negative energy weighing you down. Um, but honestly, those are the kind of the best outings because usually after that, if you can learn from them, see what you did wrong, adjust, make adjustments throughout your week, work week, and then, you know, put the adjustments into play, uh, your next start, you know, more than likely it's going to be a better outing. And if it's not, then you got to figure it out again. It's just one of those things where, um, you know, those rough outings are, are those those learning curves, that's, those are those teachers. Um, and, and you really do learn from them, um, even if you don't think you do. Um, you know, you could be mad at yourself all week long about, you know, giving up a couple runs and, and, and whatnot and not pitching good. But um, if you go back and watch the video and, and really fully, you got to, you have to literally fully just love the failure, love watching the film, love watching your mistakes, and then going out there and fixing them to where next time you don't make those same mistakes again. Yeah. yeah. Um, like Justin said, those are those outings are, are some of the most tough, you know, during. Um, you're out there in the middle of everybody, 
and you know you feel like all eyes are on you those are some of the toughest outings but those are some of the most crucial uh for your for your building for your character building um not only is it going to like like just to say it help you um you know take take hold of the situation you know um analyze it and you know have a better plan going into next week um that's probably the biggest thing is is bringing it back to the middle it's not let yourself when you're doing well getting too high um and kind of just riding that high and when you're too, doing too low is kind of keeping yourself down here um for me like one of the biggest things is like find like a happy medium um like as soon as the game is over or as soon as an outing is over um I'll like analyze it, take my notes, finalize it, jot it down, and then move on. Because like you can go up here and pitch three or four games well, but you may have a bad, an okay outing. But you've been doing so well, you're riding high up here to where now you're okay outing. You start go down. Your okay outing may think you may think you're out of whack, you know. But real all in all, you've been doing so well, you never brought yourself back to where you actually were. You're just kind of riding on that high or that low. Um, you're not bringing yourself back to the middle and analyzing as well. So that's that's one of the biggest things for me is just making sure, you know, you're the same guy, same girl, same, you know, human. I know it's a team game, but I also know it's you on that mound. I mean, it's you. It all starts with you as a pitcher. And, mm -hmm. you know, I've really thought about that, of how that intense pressure, it can get to someone. But I that makes a lot of sense. When you were thinking about being a professional baseball player, did you always want to be a pitcher? Is that what you really saw yourself doing or something else? I don't think anybody that <laughs> pitcher wants to be a pitcher, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, I'm just being real. Everyone loves to hit. I mean, yeah. you go to a baseball game, everybody wants to see the home run. Everybody wants to see the, the hitters. Um, yeah, growing up, me and Jordan, we both played positions. I played center, he played short. And... Man, I love the outfield. I love the hit. Um, you know, it just so happens that I was able to throw 90 off the mount, off the mound and, uh, you know, I was able to pitch. So uh, just kind of had to choose when I got drafted. Yeah, I don't think anybody really starts as a pitcher. Uh, there's very few POs that are POs throughout their whole life. So that's the crazy guys that think, you know what I want to do? I want to be a catcher and get beat up every game. Those have got to be the crazy guys. No, no, those dudes get stuck back there. <laughs> Last kind of normal question I'll say, in five years, you look back, oh, the year of COVID, this is what I remember. Um, well, I just had a beautiful daughter two months ago. That's probably what I remember most. She, she was born in August, August 19th of this year. So uh, that's probably what I remember. Um, baseball, there wasn't too much baseball with me this year with the minor league season being canceled. So that was the highlight of my year. I definitely, definitely will remember uh, little Aria. Uh, <laughs> I can't even believe I'm an uncle still, but uh, yeah. you know, it's, it's awesome, man. I, I, it's, it's amazing. Uh, going through that, that 60 game season in the bubble, um, you know, not really being able to get outside and, and do much besides go to the field and stretch your apartment, which there was some positives that COVID brought, I guess you could say was, would be, you know, the team chemistry. You're with your team almost all the time. And that was literally all you could hang out with. So being able to bond with those guys and, and you know, create a relationship with those those guys that I'm going to be with in the future um, was great. Um, so that was a definite positive. And uh, being in the quarantine, um, we never really get to be home in the summertime just because obviously baseball, but we got to come home for spring training and we were back home for like two and a half, three months. And in the summertime, um, since we haven't got to do that since uh, probably middle school, high school, without <laughs> playing baseball. So uh, that was pretty cool to get get to chill with the family and, and um, you know, get back home. So I have a couple of questions. Justice, I want you to answer what you think Jordan would say. And the questions of Jordan, I think what you think Justice would say. All right. How well you guys know each other. Justice, what? Most older brother thing about Jordan? <laughs> oh, man. He's always going to get his way. Let's just say that. <laughs> He's always going to get his way. I mean, it could come to, it could come to, you know, a pair of shoes that maybe one of us want to wear that day. He's going to wear them. <laughs> it's going to come down to that. But, uh yeah, he's he's always gonna get his way at the end, but I'm okay with that. I've been dealing with it for 24 years now, so I'm used to it. All right, Jordan, what's the most younger brother thing about Justice? 
most younger brother thing about justice. Um, probably gets on my nerve. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> most younger brother brother thing. Um, I don't know. I had to probably say just like I don't know. I really can't think of that. What is Jordan? What is Justice's favorite home cooked meal? His home favorite home cooked meal is mom's enchiladas mm. or uh, grandma's chicken and dumplings, probably. Nice. All right, Justice. What's Jordan's favorite home cooked meal? Uh, lasagna. He loves lasagna. Uh, I'm trying to think what else Sandy might have cooked. I don't know. Our grandma can can straight throw down. So, like, everything she cooks <laughs> is, is unreal. So, it, I'm just going to have to say my grandma Sandy's cooking just in general. Yeah, hands down. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Can't beat that. <laughs> All right, Justice. What is Jordan's favorite movie? Mm. Hardball. Ooh. All right, Jordan, what is Justice's favorite movie? Justice's favorite movie? Which one? Probably Space Jam. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's, that's probably on his list. <laughs> you can't go wrong with Space Jam, no. Not ah. Jordan, what is just, who is Justice's favorite musical artist? His favorite artist? Yeah. Uh, right now, it's probably Rod Wave. This is a <laughs> rapper named Rod Wave. Nice. Or, yeah, Rod Wave. We'll go Rod Wave. Nice. All right, Justice. What about Jordan's? Jordan probably Kane Brown. <laughs> Jordan looks at Kane Brown, Drake, dang on Broadway. I mean, we listen to the kind of the same same yeah. thing. What is Jordan Justice? What is Jordan's favorite video game? Call of Duty. <laughs> Call of Duty. Hands down, yeah. Is it for both of you? Or Jordan, no, I don't what play is Call of Justice? Duty. Justice, no, he's more he's more of like a sports games, anything sports, video, uh, baseball, football, basketball, any of that. Yeah, that's one of the things. I love playing this. Uh, I love playing NBA Jam with my boys. Oh, that's the uh, game, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's just classic. It's on our Xbox, and I just love playing with them. All right, <laughs> this is one for both of you. We're near the end here. Best thing about being on the road? Best thing about being on the road? I'd probably have to say just getting to eat all the different type of food. Being from Tennessee, we eat that good, you know, Southern cooked food, which I miss sometimes on the road. Don't get me wrong. But, uh, you know, there are times where we get to go out, and, you know, like in Seattle, they have good seafood out there and, um, you know, some good good Chinese food out there. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, my favorite thing uh, about traveling, um, honestly, the hotel beds. I'm a sucker for hotel beds and like the, the dark the dark shades that are always in them. Uh, yeah, so I, I I'm I'm a fan of the hotels. So I ain't gonna lie, hotel bed. You like to lay up, man. <laughs> Jordan, if you weren't a baseball player, you would be a I'd be a, a Twitch streamer. I play video games for, for I'll try to play for video video games professionally. <laughs> for my career is what I would try to do. <laughs> awesome. What about you, Justice? If you weren't a baseball player, you would be? I probably want to open up my own facility. Um, you know, nice. do some do some coaching. It is baseball related, but I'd want to open up my own facility, own weight room, and, uh, you know, train train kids, do something like yep. that. So I know, I, I think that if eventually Major League Baseball will go to a full DH for both leagues, I really, really do. But just in case, if you ever had to face each other, you're pitching and your brother comes to the plate, what pitch do you throw to strike him out? Fastball. He ain't yeah, I'm it. throwing heater down the middle. <laughs> he ain't touching it. Heater down the heater. middle. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever face each other? In a we game? Have in a- we have in the past, like during scrimmages and stuff like that, but uh, it's been a while. Think, yeah, it's been a minute. Yeah. I can't even remember what happened. I think I struck him out, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I can't complain about the call think. or something, and then ended up maybe getting a little little single off the end of the bat or something like that. But <laughs> <laughs> yes. last question for you both is, uh, what's next? What's next? Um, 
get ready for next year. Get ready for 2021. Um, you know, this is the off season, so every day I'm in the gym, uh, staying ready, staying in shape, uh, and putting in that work for 2021 season, which will be February uh, spring training out in Arizona. So, um, yep, looking forward to that. Same as Justice. Uh, looking forward to February. Um, a lot of working out, a lot of throwing. Um, a lot of chill time, downtime in between there too as well, but um, still going to, you know, get in the gym and keep our arms, you know, conditioned and well, and we'll be ready for 20, 2021. I know both of your spring trainings are in Arizona, correct? Yep. Will you cross paths at some point in the spring training schedule? Yeah, 100%. We'll play, we'll play each other, I think, this year. We usually live with each other in spring training, which works out perfect. Uh, yeah. our, our facilities are only 15 minutes apart, so, um, you know, it, it works out good. But, yeah, we'll definitely cross paths and hopefully favor will lean towards me. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, this has been um, an excellent time talking to you. I appreciate your time. I know you're busy. It's a – baseball's an all-year-long job. And uh, I appreciate your time, and the students of Blackland High School appreciate it as well. So I appreciate you having me, Brian. Thank you.